Hey, what's going on, everybody? We are live on Integrated Entrepreneur. And today, me and Keith are going to talk to you about how you can create leverage inside of your company. And when we say leverage, we're, what we're talking about is one plus one adding up to more than two, right? You want to do things that are going to compound and that are going to have a much higher reward than the risk and the effort associated with them, right? How do you amplify the input that you're putting in? So Keith, kick us off here. Yeah, man, I think you know, to start, let's extract what leverage really means and, yep. and then go from there, right? And so when we're talking to business owners all the time, I think leverage is a term that gets taken for something different most yes. of the times, right? And as a business owner, like there's four phases, I think, that we go through as an in, in ownership of business, right? There's phase one where you're the octopus, you're the janitor, you're the fucking mailman, you're the milk boy, you're the chlorine yeah. guy for the pool, you're everything. Plumber. You're, you're all of it. Yeah. And you're all of it in, in, in saving face of money and time and, and this lie that we tell ourselves we can't afford it yet, et cetera, et cetera. And then, and then we get that complacency issue of like, I have to keep doing this because now I'm used to doing it. And if anyone else does it, they'll fuck it all up. And so I think we get like, we get confused and tricked into staying in the octopus world forever. Right. Mm -hmm. Then you, then you realize like, I'm sick and tired of fucking being sick and tired of staying the same. So let me make a hire. Yeah. Right. But then we hire and we don't leverage that person. We just give them shit to do. Right. And that, giving you a task to do isn't in and of itself leverage. That's no. just me offloading work to you and delegation. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the component that people say, Oh, I am, I'm leveraging people because they work for me. Sure. But what are you doing to maximize that person in your silo of employment? Mm -hmm. Cause that in that component and that answer is where you'll find the leverage that, that you're talking about, right. Or that people, are unaware of. And so we go octopus and then we go to hire and then we go, we hit, you know, octopus will take you to a million, right? Yeah. And then you're, you're going to get taxed and burnt out and fucking you're tapped, right? Yeah. Then a million to 5 million, you usually hire some generalist, right? Who can yeah. do the job, but they're not specialists, right? Correct. Then you start learning like, I can't really leverage the generalist because although they're doing the task, I'm still having to watch them do the shit and babysit and QA it and all of the things. Mm -hmm. It's not until you get the, the specialist where you can truly start to leverage because then you don't have to worry about it again. And it allows you, the business owner, to then go focus on something completely different and lose sight of that one thing. When yeah. you can do that, now you're truly leveraging something. Or someone, yes. right? And you can just check someone's work, right? All right, cool. Great example of this is hiring employees, right? Versus hiring a marketing director who's going to run all your ads. Marketing director is a specialist who all you have to do is check the performance of his work, but you don't have to tell him how to do it. He knows. Yes. Yeah. Right. I'm not giving you a funnel page. I'm not telling you who to go reach out to. You have already extracted that data from me and now you're off to the races and I can yeah. shut that down. It's working yeah. until it's not working. Right. Yeah. Now, don't be a fool. Right. Obviously, trust but verify. Make sure your marketing numbers are right. Your budget's right and all that shit. Right. I have to throw that disclaimer in there so we don't get sued for, you know, giving bad information later. Yeah. Uh, but that is the, the true definition of leverage is you being able to knock out multiple things without knocking out multiple things yourself. Yep. Right. So let's talk about that. that that's the human capital leverage. Mm -hmm. Right. Now I've got a slew of specialists who then leverage people underneath them. Right. And then it's a rinse and repeat and you're building the foundation and it's kind of like a pyramid, right? That's the corporate ladder pyramid. Start with me. And then I build the family out beneath me. But every single layer is run by specialist and not generalist. Because yeah. if you just have a slew of generalists, your ass just has a bunch of goddamn people to babysit and you're never going to get shit done. Yeah. Right? That's true. Well, let's talk about it with money. But I guess before I take it to money, what is your definition of leverage and, and where have you seen it successful inside of the business? 
Well, listen, it could be people that you have, right? You, you said it. When things that are greater than the sum of their parts, right? The individual items, when you add them up, are greater than the individual sum of their parts. So let's look at other ways, maybe not an employee, but another high value activity that can gain leverage. So for us, we also have great partnerships, not just with our clients, but with who our clients go to for certain things. So I'll give you an example, an accountant or a equipment vendor. Okay. That's a very, very high leverage person for us. And here's why the accountant or the equipment reseller, right? Their clients need to need access to capital. Right. So for every equipment reseller or accountant, accountant we bring on as a partnership, it actually compounds, right? Because every single time they have a run into somebody that can use our services, they're making the introduction. They can usually do that an infinite amount of times within inside of, you know, <clears throat> a month or a year, right? So anytime you bring them on, that's compounding and that will grow the business a lot faster than other things. So for us, especially a sales organization, I would be looking at getting, uh, maintaining and strengthening certain partnerships because those are very high leverage situations. Mm -hmm. So that that's another area that I would absolutely look and focus in as soon as you can. And guys, there's ways to do it. What you have to do is you have to basically automate. I don't want to say automate, but niche it down. Okay. Figure out what tools you can use to reach out, figure out where you can download those lists and then hire somebody, a specialist, or it could be a generalist that you train yeah. to go out and make those calls. And guess what? Yes, you hired one other person, but the results of what he's doing is going to benefit the company disproportionately to his pay. Yeah. Though that is a high leverage situation. Well, let's talk about, let's talk about a, uh, what about people that can't afford to hire somebody, right? Let's talk about things that no one fucking talks about. What about white labeling another company to pick up a service or a solution that you can provide to your clients and not have to provide any work, that, right? I love it. I love white it labeling, I think, is uh, a highly underutilized opportunity for most small business owners that want to grow and scale but don't want to hire whether they don't know how to be leaders, they don't know how to train, they don't know how to be a, a leader, boss, mm -hmm. right, and do all those things. So the next best solution, and I've done this in the past, is white labeling a company. Yeah. And so for the folks that don't know what white labeling is, Jonathan owns a financial institution that gives credit and lends money, right? If I was in the same atmosphere, but I didn't want to do that, and I was licensed, probably a bad candidate to choose, right? <laughs> I have to be licensed and all that shit. But let's just say Jonathan did fucking marketing. Yeah. Okay. Jonathan does marketing for Google Local, Google Guaranteed, and, and Meta. And I own an, an ads agency or I own an agency that handles a lot of other things that business owner needs minus marketing, but it's become something that is now being asked of me regularly. What I would do is I would go find someone like Jonathan that I trust, know, and I can obviously trust and verify, and I can see some of his work, and there's a history there. And I would say, hey, man, I want to create a partnership with you where I'm going to bring you in some clients. You're going to white label it as black label solutions, but you guys are actually going to do all the work, and you're going to bill me, and I'm going to bill the client, and then the client pays me, and I pay you. Well, in that routine, I'm going to be the face of all the activity. I'm going to meet with the client. I'm going to collect all the data. I may or may not bring Jonathan into these meetings, depending on that relationship. But Jonathan's going to act as a representative of Black Label Solutions and not integrated. Right. And so what ends up happening is the client thinks now Black Label Solutions is a full fledged marketing agency. I've made 200 bucks a month on that relationship and the flow of information and to make sure that I'm checking in with Jonathan and his team to make sure that they're doing what they're supposed to. And then the client knows no different. Yeah. Right. They've got one lane of activity, one lane of communication. I pick up the opportunity to now go sell everything Jonathan's company does on the marketing side of things to my clients. And I've picked up an extra 
solution that I can offer without having to open up a completely different company. That is the pure definition of white labeling. It's kind of like an affiliate partnership, but better, right? Because now you're, you're just not selling. I'm not selling something and collecting 20 bucks from Jonathan and never talking to anyone again. I'm still part of the relationship and I'm still learning. Yep. White labeling is a highly underutilized growth mechanism that people can take advantage of. And that is another pure definition of leverage. I don't know the first thing about marketing. I'm going to go find someone that does. I'm going to proposition them. Hey, I can bring you X number of clients every month. What kind of work can we do together? What's the cost? How does it look? What do you charge? Is there a little bit of room for me to make a little bit of money? Typically, you know, Jonathan would be like, yeah, man, I charge 500 bucks a month to do it. I'll charge you 400. You make a hundred bucks. I make 400 and you just bring me a bunch of people. And I call that hundred dollars of marketing expense. Right. Yep. So that is one of the best ways that I found, right, without having to go crazy out of pocket, build a whole new agency within or build a whole new thing is to find someone that does it well and approach them. Yeah. Give me your opinion on that. What are you thinking about white label? So white labeling is very common in my industry. It's actually why I created capital uh, gains, right? It's people learn how to do what I do and then they can do it in conjunction with me using all my stuff and my brand. So I love it. Here's where it works. If you guys have the same core values you, you, and you have two good companies connecting with tons of communication, that'll work. Here's where it doesn't work. Okay. When your core values are different or you got one guy that is just in it for the commission and wants to, doesn't care about the work. Typically that's when they go sideways is when you find people that do not share your values and one is just money on. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's every time it's been messed up. It's been a situation like that. The times at work, it works because everybody wants it to work and everybody communicates and they share the same values. That's right. White, white labeling is an amazing, it doesn't matter what size partnerships and white labeling is a great strategy to create leverage. Here's one other thing for the people that were thinking we were going to say something else when we said, if they can't afford to hire the leverage, you also could check out uh, virtual assistants. Okay. Mm -hmm. Especially if you're new in business and you, you are in that octopus stage as, as Keith said, and by the way, guys, there's some people you might be all the way developed in some of the areas as an entrepreneur and still have some tendencies that look like an octopus. Okay. Um, because it's natural to revert back to, bad habits and it's just easier sometimes to do it yourself. So if you are in that octopus or you're concerned that you don't have the funds, look into hiring virtual assistants. You can get them pretty cheap and you can get them to just do a couple of specific tasks. And then as you get more comfortable and more familiar with them, you can have them take on more and more tasks. And that's a really easy budget friendly way to get some quick leverage, especially you know, if you're, you're smaller, right. But that'll work for anybody. And then, yeah, I mean, 200 bucks a week can get you a part-time VA to be able to handle a shit ton of your busy work. Yes, for sure. And we, we place those people in our clients world all the time. The reason isn't, it isn't so much leverage in my opinion, but it's, it's time reduction. Yeah. Right. You're leveraging them to reduce some time. But when I think leverage, I think much bigger. That is a very small definition of leverage. <clears throat> I will tell you this. You still need to be able to manage if you're going to have a VA. Because what we've seen uh, is that it's easy to say, hey, I need a VA and go to one of these VA companies and they find someone and you're excited. What we noticed is at the end of that, when they're like, okay, the VA is placed and you've paid for the VA, now that person belongs to you. Find a company that actually will manage the VA for you, mm -hmm. right? Because paying for a VA for two months and then terminating that VA doesn't do anything but put you two months behind, yep. right? So you want to make sure that you find a company that does daily management, end of day reports, check-ins, et cetera, so that they can come to you and say, boom, here's what your VA did today. You know, do you have any directions for tomorrow? And you're off to the races, but yeah. <clears throat> VA is becoming more and more and more and more popular for sure. Yeah. It's very helpful. Yeah. And then I would, I would also say 
marketing, right? If we're talking about leveraging, and a lot of people would have turned this show on and thought we were to leverage about money, okay? Yes, money- Money comes from all this shit. Yeah, money comes from all of it, can be used for leverage, right? But another thing that you can do is anytime you're marketing, right? That there's high leverage in that, but when there, the most leverage is applied is when you can educate, entertain, and <clears throat> enroll them into something that's a one-to-many. Here's what I mean. If you're speaking on a stage, you're speaking one-to-many. That is very personal. People want personal connection, okay? That is a high leverage situation. If you are doing a webinar, okay, that is also high leverage situation, a high leverage situation because it's one to many, but you're not connecting as much or as deep as if you're speaking from the stage. But either one of those guys, anytime you can go up and educate a group of people on what you do and keep them interested and educated, okay, that is a very, very high leverage situation because the people that are listening there, okay, are going to want to be your clients. As long as you talk about their problems and how to solve their problems and how their problems you've dealt with, okay? A lot of people mess this part up. A lot of people think that their programs or something that they have to say is just going to resonate with a group of people. That's not the case. To get a real high leverage situation, you want the right type of people that you understand or you're pretty sure that you know their problems. You want to speak to and address those problems and the solutions, and you want to demonstrate your ability to solve those. And if you could do those three things in front of a large group, a one-to-many situation, that is one of the highest points of leverage you can have as an entrepreneur. And so when it comes to marketing, look for those situations. And the more of those situations you can create and replicate, you're going to be in a really good position. So yep. What else you got? So I think last bit of leverage, right, to wrap this thing up, because there's about 90 takeaways in that 17-minute bit that we just put on for you. Yeah. The last thing that I would say, the most utilized uh, thing, and and honestly, probably one of the most uh, shady components, if you're not careful, you'll get your fucking head taken off with a fee, mm -hmm. would be CRM mm -hmm. and automations. Yes. And creating an opportunity in your warehouse to take one activity that's done consistently and automate it and never have to fuck with it again. Yeah. Right. Take one process, whether it's invoicing, whether it's bookkeeping, whether it's client communication, email nurtures, and internal and external notification and campaigns and reactivation, whatever it may be. Right. A well-crafted highly customized CRM that you do not pay 60,000, 30,000, 20,000, 10,000 dollars for it. If you guys are looking at CRMs and they're talking about these kind of fucking prices, if you don't goddamn call me, we're going to have a problem. That shit is ridiculous. The reason I say that is because I was a sucker at one point in my life. I paid a lot of money for a CRM that worked just about as good as a fucking tic-tac-toe board on a napkin at fucking Waterburger. Okay, it didn't work. Uh, and I've got a lot of clients that have gone through that. And I know, you know, a lot of people that yeah. have gone through that, remove all of that fear, find the right company. But the reality is if you get a really well put together CRM yeah. and project management system, you will have so much freedom back that it's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. And also you're not babysitting anyone. You don't have to worry about the gym send out the invoice did he hit the button did he mark this this did he do that and it's all automated now so no more three o'clock drive home at the end of the day like oh shit i gotta turn around i forgot to send an email or holy fuck i forgot to do this because it's done automated right yeah. by a system and systems aren't fail proof but uh they fail a hell of a lot less than jimmy or samantha yeah. or john or whoever yeah. right and so i think like the way that this conversation has gone, that's kind of the, you know, the piece of the puzzle that, that kind of brings it all full circle. Yep. I if you don't want to deal with humans, then deal with a badass CRM system. If you don't want to deal with a CRM system and you don't want to hire someone, start with a VA. Learn how to lead and manage that way, right? Yep. Start part-time. 
work it up and then find VAs that are specialist. Okay. Oh, there's a lot of fucking shit back and forth on, on VAs that I've seen. Oh man, it's shady. You shouldn't be paying people so little that we've got 42, 43, 44 VAs on staff right now and they make good money. Yeah. Just because they live in the Philippines or they live out in Mexico and it doesn't cost them a lot to live and they, they live beneath the standards that we live to doesn't mean we pay them any less. Mm -hmm. We pay the yeah. shit out of our VAs. And for that, they're loyal. They show up. They go above and beyond. And they're great. Yeah. I, right? I have Just like similar. anyone else. My VAs make a good amount of money and they're very happy to be employed. Okay. Um, also to back up your CRM, because <clears throat> we use the same system, it's a game changer guys. Like I use it personally and I use it for, I mean, every, my internal agents, my outer, my ex, my outside agents, everybody uses the same CRM, all the automations and it's a game changer. All right. So that is a very high leverage opportunity. If you haven't set it up the right way to make your life a lot easier. So guys. I would listen to this twice, send it to someone that needs to hear it. And when you're doing that, just take notes and, and take notes on what you can implement immediately and start doing it. And then just, and then give us feedback, right? We'd love yeah. it. Uh, I'd love to see one of you guys use Keith's CRM or come to one of my foundation workshops and then see the results after, right? That's yeah. why we're here. We're the question here. we're going to get is, well, how do we get started? So let's go ahead and answer that question. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to do a, a time block study because you don't know what task you spend the most time on. You think you know, but you don't know. So today's a Monday. Start this on a Monday. Do it through Friday. Every hour on the hour, set an alarm on your phone to ding to tell you to write down what you did the past hour. Doesn't need to be a homework assignment, the long report, just... What were you doing? Whether you were taking a shit, eating lunch, or actually doing work, just jot down real quickly what you were doing. At the end of the day, you're going to go back to those assignments and what you were doing, and you're going to assign them how much per hour would that task cost me to do. And at the end of the week, we're going to go back and we're going to see where you spend all your time because the proof is in the pudding. Once we notice that, that's the first hire you make. Yeah, we're going to pull that person in first. And that's the first thing, whether it's a VA or a CRM that can handle it or whatever it is, that's the first thing we're going to attack. And then that's how we start to build upon that. So not only do you have some takeaways on the, the, the juice of this, but now you got step one. Do that. If you do the time block, I will give you a 30 minute free consultation. Shoot us a message letting us know you got it done. We'll get you on the calendar, myself or Jonathan, and we will make sure that we give you step two to leverage there you go guys easy enough it's right there and if you need to get in touch with me just message me if you want to come to the foundation workshop hit just message me foundation all right guys appreciate you we'll catch you on the next one see you